Hi again, everyone, and welcome back to the Narcissistic Resistance. And this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Denise, and here is her story. Hi, Ali. Denise LaFrance, the painter here in Toronto. I made a small contribution to your amazing and valuable channel. I wish I could give more, but I'm living on disability and a meager dispensable income. I'd like to share with you a true story on video here of a stunt my narc ex-mother pulled a number of years ago before I fired the whole narc infestation family of mine. Pause and comment as you please or just at the end. Your input will be greatly appreciated. At the time the shenanigan went down, I was just at the beginning to develop MS, and unbeknownst to me, at the time, other stress-induced illnesses too, cyst cancer and benign brain tumor in my right cerebellum, just mentioning this to emphasize that narc exposure can literally make us sick, and that despite my difficulty in walking at the time, this whole art stunt with the narc went down, my narc ex-mother, Pat LaFrance, was relentless in her physical demands of me, all the while pulling the famous, but I'm old, narc card. Thanks, narc, for making me sick. Grapefruit size, rare, aggressive cyst cancer since, since been excised from my small intestine, and the progressive MS is doing its thing now. I just use a mobility scooter. Good news is, aside from balance and weakness, the discomfort is manageable, and I'm just so glad to be living and enjoying a narc-free existence. <clears throat> I'd be interested to hear your take on the topic matter I'm mentioning in this video, Ollie, especially since you and your lovely artist wife, Charlene, have insight into the life of an artist. Best wishes to, to you both, and thanks so much for your stellar channel and insight as you glean as you educate and help other narc abuse survivors worldwide. Special shout out to me, Norm, is to fuck right off. Sincerely, Denise, narc free now for eight peaceful years. What up, YouTube? Denise LaFrance, the painter, here. Narcomatic. Hope you're having a narc-free Sunday, enjoying your, enjoying your life. Have you fired your narc yet? Fire a narc today. I uh, had narc parents and three uh, golden children brothers. Oh my god. Ah, where does the madness come from? It's an infestation. Have you noticed? Huh? Huh? They're everywhere. So uh, my new buddy Deb has a station uh, finally free from narcs, narcissists, and uh, she so kindly made a video. Um, validating and telling my story because I didn't want to come on YouTube. Um, I've been resisting telling my story because it's so fucking absurd and uh, complex. You're like a, <laughs> a giant uh, lava spewing volcano of shit that would erupt. I don't want to put the lid back on. It's hard to contend with. It's like a lot to process all the um, multitude of uh, assholery, the intentional sadistic assholery that's uh, transpired over these uh, many years. And, uh, yeah, she just told us one thing. Um, instance that I described about my uh, narc ex-mother making this uh, preposterous claim that I uh, sold her this painting that she coveted 
and uh, she never bought the painting. She wanted it. I guess she got in her mind after seeing it that she liked it. And uh, never told me she wanted it. I would have given it to her. I gave her a print of it. You should have just known. Don't you know that, Denise? You should have just known. See, it doesn't matter because the narcissist will see anything as an opportunity to make you feel like shit. So I'm sure there's guilt in here that why didn't you know and you should have given it. Onwards. Which then she started saying that I stole the print and then it turned into, the, it morphed into this convoluted fable that she dreamed of that she bought the painting and that I stole it back to sell it to a complete stranger. Like, really, please. It's one of my first uh, landscapes. And um, no one had bought the early landscapes and I hadn't even really been promoting them actually. But she had seen the original um, when she came one time, one of the rare times she bothered to come to visit me. And uh, she didn't offer to buy it and didn't say she wanted it. Otherwise, I would have given it to her. So when I went to San Francisco to meet uh, the friend of my uh, one time good friend, Peter Berlin, I brought that painting with me to give to the lady I was about to meet. And I, I ended up giving that painting to her. I guess the story was uh, manifesting and spinning and ex expanding in the narc's uh, brain, manipulative brain, concocting and fabricating mind, rattling around. <laughs> and she came up with this fable, huh? <laughs> this fable and here's how it goes here's how it's going to go the plan, the fable Denise sold the painting to me then Denise stole the painting from me so she could sell it to someone else now she owes me a painting. Me. I owe Nark a painting. That's how the little story spun. Which is uh, utter bullshit. So she kept telling me <laughs> this story, thinking I guess if she repeats it enough, it's going to be true. And somehow I'll be convinced that I owe her a painting and that she once actually owned it. That painting, before I brought it to San Francisco, had never left my premises. She kept saying it so many times, I was like, shut the fuck up about this stupid story, will you? One day my son and I were at one of those obligatory family functions that I detested and attending and we survived the nonsense and, and boredom and everyone was getting ready to leave and they're standing in their coats around the fireplace and uh, Nark seizes the opportunity to try to embarrass me and, and substantiate her lie because now she's going to say it in front of an audience. And she makes this grand sweeping gesture above the fireplace her, with an, an orator's voice. Denise, will the painting that you're going to be doing for me to replace the painting that I bought from you, that you then stole from me, be large enough to cover the space above the hearth of the fireplace? My son kicks me and he's like, she's fucking lying. I said, I know. And I just thought, shut the fucking fuck up. I'm getting sick of this stupid fable. You keep telling. Now you're saying it in front of everybody. 
I know what you're doing. You're now trying to call me a, a thief of my own art, an art thief of my own art, like the epitome of absurdity spewing from your toilet of a mouth. This is not unusual, especially for not for me. And I'm sure when Charlene sees this, not going to be unfamiliar to her either because her mother used to do, uh, and she's talked about this, and I, I know I've talked about this, the exact same type of shit, okay? Not necessarily with her art. I mean, she was beaten over her art with her possessions. And what I'm talking about is what you're, the blatant fable telling, the blatant, like, just as they're rewriting history right in front of your face, and there's nothing you can do about it. You know your art, you know what you've sold, you know what the parameters were, and so does she, but yet she will lie about it. How Charlene went through it, okay, and I'll give you two of the best examples. Okay, I met, like I said, I met Charlene when she was working at the Lancome counter for Macy's. And when you work, when you, when you work in cosmetics or fragrances, you get tons of free merchandise from the companies, from Lancome, from the, from the individual fragrance lines, okay, for free, because they want you to use their products, they want you to wear it because it sells it better. So they're given that stuff, and it's called gratis, and it all goes through loss prevention and security, and everybody has, every employee has a gratis number that is engraved onto the bottle and across the bottle it says gratis not or tester gratis or tester not for sale okay and i'm only saying this because this is the best example i can give you of what you're talking about denise so charlene would go looking for her fragrance looking for her makeup and it was gone and then, lo and behold, there it would be on her, on her mother's nightstand, on her mother's makeup table. And she'd be like, what the fuck? What is this? And she, when the mother would go, oh, well, I bought that. No, you didn't. It's it is physically impossible for you to have purchased this bottle because it has my employee... ID number fucking engraved in it. It says not for resale on it. Oh, well, I bought it. You didn't buy that. I bought it. But if you're going to take it, you're going to take it. Sound familiar? And then she would announce in front of family or friends or wherever, whenever, the rare occasion they were out. Oh, well, I gave that to Charlene. You know, Charlene stole, I bought it, but Charlene stole it from me. Saw the woman do this. I think the second one was her mother was accusing her, well, this is when we were still in New Jersey and they were in New York of blocking her on MySpace, of all things. MySpace. The to the point where her father's calling her, you gotta unblock your mother. It's like, she's not blocked. She doesn't know what the hell she's looking at or what she's doing. And I remember we went to their house, their apartment on Easter that year. And her mother brought it up in front of me. And I said... Just go on her computer and let's see it. Opens up her computer. There's Charlene right on her MySpace. Right there. Right there. So what are you talking about there? Her mother goes, oh, well, you must have done something. This is common. I understand it. You should have, Denise, at that point, just you and your son, and I understand this is... You've been free of them for eight years, but you should have just been walking out at that point. 
you preposterous fucking narc from whose loins I sprang. <laughs> you idiot. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to shut her the fuck up. She wants a painting. I'll do a painting. But I'm not going to do the same painting because I hate painting the same painting. No matter what you do, it's not going to no be good There's no passion enough. in it. So I'll do one that I want. And it'll be nice. And I'll give it to you. And then you'll shut up. Because you covet my painting. She'll never shut up. You know, me. Me. The person who she said, Why don't you stop painting? No one cares about your paintings. Stop painting. You'll be famous when you're dead. Kind of like how Charlene's parents beat her for her artwork when she was a child. And then when they found out when we moved down here that she was painting again and doing art, her father's like, oh, well, I want a farm. What can I get from it? She also said, no one will remember you when you're dead. She liked talking about my impending death for some reason. Narc. Well, you're not really a painter. You're only a tracer. <laughs> Another attempted zinger jabs at the uh, essence of what it is I love to do. I ended up painting a landscape of prison in Kosovo. Highly detailed, painstaking, but fun, and took me two weeks every day, several hours a day to paint. Continuation of story. I do the painting, as I said, and then I show her the painting on the internet little photo of it and uh, she doesn't tell me that she likes the painting uh, she says aren't you going to frame it and I said no I don't have money for that and I just give you a free painting you for those who don't know framing is expensive especially if you want a nice one framing is really it can be Hundreds to thousands of dollars if you want a decent frame. Yeah. Frame it yourself. You know, I'll, you can come <laughs> and get the painting and, and uh, take it to be framed. And she says, oh, can't you do it for me? I'm old. We're both old. Your father's nearing 80. And, you know, it's too much of a, a drive for us to drive to um to get the painting it's just too much can't you do it you know so much about framing i'll send you money to frame it you know well i've changed now i'd say uh well now i wouldn't anything because i'd have nothing to do with her but um in that given situation now i would have said no but back then I was placating her. I was uh, unaware that narcs existed and what, what that was. So to appease her and um, having empathy, which they don't have, narcs, um, having empathy for her supposed old age, despite the, the evident bullshit factor, because they, they travel all over the place. They drive to ruin Naranda, which is very far away. Uh, <laughs> six and a half hours and to Florida and all over the place. I conceded and I said, oh, right. Uh, plus, I was, just wanted it done, over and done with placate the narc. So I took the $300 that she sent uh, and wanted the receipt for, incidentally, to a, a affordable framing place. And um, picked out a nice frame. Uh, got a good deal, actually, because uh, I'm a regular customer there. I was able to get a good price and pick the perfect frame. And so the place called and said that the painting's ready. It's framed. So I called her and I said, okay. I took it to be framed. Now go to the store and pick it up. Again. Nerf card. 
Oh, no, no, we're old, you know. It was a heat wave, and my uh, MS symptoms just started manifesting. And in the heat, the heat exacerbates the symptoms and makes them worse. But I took the, the streetcar, which at the time was $3.00 there, got the heavy painting, brought it back, and, um, yeah, you know, that's a total of six dollars, which doesn't sound like much, but when a person is on a limited, uh, income, as I was, six dollars, or a roast, for a single mother with a, a, a boy, it's a lot of money, but I did it anyways, and I went to the effort, the time and effort and uh, subsequent pain, and I did that. And I called her, and I said, I've got the painting now. You know, I can uh, arrange for it to be shipped out to you. And she's like, no, I'd like it now. I said, well, then come and pick it up. No, we're old, remember? We're old. <laughs> I said, well, then I'll take it on the subway. You know, come on the subway and I'll go and we can meet halfway. No, 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 no. <laughs> they want to take the car. Too old for the subway. So they drive uh, less than 10 minutes from their house to the most easternly uh, extension of the subway. And then I cart this damn framed heavy painting in the heat all the way as far east as you can go. And then I go on the above ground extension of the subway further on the LRT and meet them at the Scarborough Town Center. And they're standing there and I show them the painting as an, as I get closer, her eyes light up, and I'm like, oh, good, some gratitude. And she starts marveling, not about the painting, which I, uh, until then she'd only seen on a small JPEG on the email. Now she can see the, the details and the nuances and whatnot and the coloration and true colors. The frame. She says nothing about that, and she marvels about the fucking beige selected to match her furniture and upholstery frame. Oh, Denise, it's just like absolutely fantastic. The frame is just not a word about the painting that I just spent two weeks doing. The painting that she's uh, insinuating that I owe her since I, the art thief, who she's now smear campaigned me to the fam ex family, you know, making a disarray of my reputation, I might add. Not that I care, you know, sometimes it matters who thinks what about you, but nevertheless, the gall. And now she's there got, getting her free painting with the frame and all the effort and my illness and coming nevertheless, carrying the damn frame, delivering it like a cigarette, you know? Got a cigarette? Yeah. Got a light? Yeah. You want me to smoke it for you too? Yeah. And that was all planned. That was all planned. You think she didn't lay awake at night knowing I'm going to come the next day and have that all scripted out in the windmills of what's left of her uh, demented mind, her morally degenerate mind. It's all part of the little plan, the little fairy tale on how it's going to go. Deliver a zinger to make me feel bad. And then the story continued as Deb had, had uh, reiterated in her video as well as she could recollect, but I'll tell it in uh, absolute detail. A couple months later, uh, I got a call from someone who uh, 
has access to city involved programs and there's a, a organization called something i don't remember what it's called something for change and what it was is a company that welcomes uh new immigrants into canada and it helps do a climate people to um the country teaching english as a second language and uh, employment whatnot and they were having a calendar that was celebrating a diversity cultural diversity and there were the contest was um for of course 12 months so uh 12 people out of this vast contest were going to win a spot for a month on this calendar out of thousands of applicants and Denise you should really apply for this you got a chance to win enter that painting a prison you know that's really good I got no money for it but I you know prestige who cares but it was just like for fun let me see if I can win it you know so I enter the contest show them that the JPEG and I win December Wow. And the photographer wants a, a high quality photo of it, a large uh, high resolution photo, and he wants to take a picture of the original. And I tell him the original's at the uh, the house of my uh, ex mother, now ex mother. And so I arrange for him to go and, uh, you know, take a photo of this. And he, he drives out there. And then he calls to let me know how it went. Oh, your parents are so great. They're absolutely the nicest people I've ever met. My God. Got there and your your mother and father offered me a beer and a sandwich. As soon as I got there, a Sammy. They make him a Sammy. This total stranger to whom they'll uh, have no relevance whatsoever. And, uh, yeah, they were so nice. And they even invited him back if he's ever in the neighborhood for a Barbie hat. And I'm like, uh, okay. You think they're great? All right. Thinking, like, they put on a little act, huh? Minutes later, the phone rings, and it's the narc. Oh, he was just wonderful and singing his praises like he was the, you know, the prince of Egypt or something had dropped by and spent a week at their estate or whatever. He was such a gentleman. He was lovely. Oh, oh yeah, the guy too said that they were bragging about my painting and how they'd always encouraged me like fucking lying, huh? Half of your name is fucking jealous, and the other's fucking liar, narc. Sorry, I'm swearing. It enhances the meaning. So she says he's wonderful. This man is just lovely. Telling me about his daughter and all this shit. She's gotten all this intel about this guy. Telling me stuff I don't want to hear. Who cares, right? The guy who's getting like. A painting in the thing and taking a photo. I never met him. Who cares? I'm telling him she's telling uh, me how great the guy is, and the guy just finished telling me that she lied that they encouraged me, and I get my artistic talent from them, and they always. That's what Charlene's parents would do, especially the father. You know, take credit. They denigrate her work, whether it was her art or her academics, and then take credit when she was recognized for it. And the father would be like, oh, well, she gets, she gets all that from me. But what your mother was doing, okay, and it doesn't surprise me at all, because first off, narcs always care more about the opinion of strangers than us. But secondly, and more importantly, what she, they were doing and why was, your mother saw him as a means to, to, to fill her own supply through bragging and maybe even financially, who knows? So she can brag and look great to him. But also, it sounds like she was trying to push this guy on you. It's like, oh, yeah, Denise, you and him, you should meet him and, you know, see what happens. 
because she's thinking about what she's going to get out of it. It's always about them and their supply, not you. They encourage me and they think I'm great. They're, oh, narcs will always brag about you to other people when they want to. And it's not to make the person they're bragging about that the scapegoat look good. It's to make them look good. Because like I've always said, they're not, they're not ill. Narcissism is not an illness, not an ailment, and they're not suffering. It's a choice. It's a, a moral uh, degeneration, a moral exclusion, omission, by choice. Wow. Set up. They know how they should act. So in order... Set up by society. It's very, it's very much in line with what I've been talking about in these last few videos. In order to uh, keep in accordance to uh, that what they know they should do, they play the role, the part of the proud parent. Because they know what they should be doing. They know that a good parent brags about their child's accomplishments encourages the child and um, enhances their experience as whatever it is they choose to be. In my case, it's an artist. So she, you know, she breaks to the guy and then she calls me singing the praises of this complete stranger. And then she says, he wants to come to your place to take a photo um, of you, of the artist, to put, a, to put underneath the, the month, a little photo of who the artist is. And I said, oh, okay. And she said, and we told him that we offer to help you, but you refuse. She didn't tell me why she said that. And I was actually quite perplexed at the time that she said that. I was like, what? You offer? Where's this incongruent uh, statement you say you made? I'll tell you exactly what it is. Because here you are being recognized for your artwork to the point where people are coming out to somebody else's location just to take a picture of it. Your mother knows how much she's tried to dissuade your art and how she's tried to sabotage it. So it's almost like an instinctive excuse making. This guy has no idea what the history is. But she's probably thinking, well, this guy must be thinking I haven't I haven't supported my daughter through her art, and this isn't my fault. That's what's driving your mother with that comment, was trying to let him know it's not my fault Denise isn't more famous. Because she knows it is. Or she at least believes it is. Uh, coming from and going, what's the purpose of making that statement? When the phone call ended, I thought about it. Why? It was like boggling my mind and weighing heavy on my mind, this riddle, puzzle. Why would she say that? The fear and of then exposure. it dawned on me. She said that right after, because you replay the conversation in your head. She said it right after mentioning that he's coming to take a photo of the artist. Then I put two and two together in her warbled mind, in the windmills of her mind. She thought to cover herself, that he's going to come here and see that I happen to live in what is the, a basement of a beautiful brownstone, in a place that she deems not nice enough, and somewhat in a bit of artistic disarray. I mean, I've got art, I've got paintings stacked up everywhere, and I'm not a neat freak. I'm not dirty, but I'm, I've got disorder in the house because I just don't care. My priorities are elsewhere, and they're in creating, not to... That's how every art studio is. That's how artists are. 
okay, your mother doesn't understand that. And because of her abuse, you're making excuses for it. If this guy is going to art studios and film and taking picture or filming other people's art, he's he he gets it. He understands it. This is all your mother's fear of being exposed. That's what it is. Sweeping up. She's a neat freak so much. First, because she's got no life. But second of all, it's for image. And it's much yeah. like uh, when... She's not an artist. You are. You're over-explaining this, Denise. She's not an artist. There's a homicide. And the murderer uh, is mopping up the blood and getting the Javex going. Huh? <laughs> She's doing it to mask the blatant flaws in her. Um, the morally degenerate criminal. So you clean up, you know, image, 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 put the attention onto that, the floor you can eat off of, and away from the glaring flaws, which is that she's uh, a parasite with no personality of her own. And uh, this, is your... this is your mother's paranoia of exposure, making her expose herself. That's exactly what this is. Her paranoia of, oh shit, everybody's going to blame me for this. Because your mother knows what she really thinks about you and your art, and she knows what she's done to sabotage it. Your mother doesn't take it seriously. She doesn't take you seriously. She doesn't take your art seriously. She has no understanding of it because, she, because A, she's not an artist, and B, she doesn't want to have an understanding of it. That's why. So now your mother is kind of caught between, in her mind, this need for, like, she's taking this gamble for this need for supply and this need for this positive exposure of having this artist's daughter featured on a calendar. She's betting that against, in her own mind, her own truth and her own, they don't have a conscience, but her own whatever tells the narc, hey, you better clean this up because because you get broadsided on this. Even though the guy in his mind works with artists every day and is seeing, I'm sure, tons of studios that are in a lot worse shape than yours, okay? Her paranoia takes over and she wants to make sure she hedges all her bets. And in so by doing that, she exposes herself, her true agenda, to you. The morals of a bandit. Well, that's not nice. That's insulting bandits. The morals of Satan. So that's why she said it. Because she's worried that this complete stranger is going to think that uh, that they're like that. But why was she compelled to tell me she said it? This is the this is it. This is the peak. This the is the climax. climax. The zenith of her madness. Because what's the narcissist's ultimate tool to gaslight you, Denise? If she's going to tell you to your face that you stole a painting from her. Okay, she will try to convince you of anything. She's gaslighting you, so that's in your mind, so you don't say, what a horrible fucking pile of dog shit my parents truly are. She knows she overdid it with him, and she knows he's probably going to come brag to you about it. And her fear is, once he brags, you're going to drop the dime. Do you understand? That's why she was kind of pushing you, him on you in, I think, some sort of romantic way as well, trying to make it like, hey, don't blow this, Denise. Don't blow this. Don't blow this. Like for you, but it's for her. And, her, and, and wanting her positive exposure 
without the ri running the risk of the true of the tr real truth coming out. And nastiness, the sadistic, intentional, sadistic asshole. She told me that because she wanted me to know. Hey, guess what, Denise? I lied. And that we offered to help you. Isn't that funny? I. lied that we offered to help you and that you said no makes us look good but it makes you look like a fucking idiot huh and it makes you look like you living in what we consider abject poverty is your fault and dummy you refuses help from us we were all so willing to help you yes that fits in with the script that we're the parents that we're trying to pretend to be to fool this complete stranger, but she wanted me to know. She kept saying it over and over again. Why? Because they didn't react. She wants a reaction. Oh my God. This is one of about a zillion instances of uh, intentional sadistic assholery over the decades that have been uh, inflicted onto me. And they're fired. The end. She wanted the reaction because it was you and her one-on-one. -on -one. And that way, she was hoping that you were going to call her out on it. So she could crush your resistance. That's why. She wanted the fight at that moment, okay, to quell any possibility of any resistance coming back, of any revolution coming back. That was her plan. That's calculated, and you got it exactly right. I mean, we're on, we're pretty, we're on the same page here with this. And it's all because of your mother's paranoia. The narc's paranoia will lead to their exposure. So thank you so much for your contribution and thank you for your story again, Denise. And your art is wonderful. I am going to also um, leave a link to this video in the description box as well if you guys want to check out the raw footage and see uh, the artwork Denise is actually talking about as well because it's great. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comments section below. And again, if you want your story read on this channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, or you'd like to set up a private Skype chat, phone call, have a private video made, or you would just like to sponsor the channel, or sponsor a video for someone else, you know what to do with the email and PayPal links in the description box. And if you're still unclear, wait for the final video link to pop up on this video, which will take you to the instructional video that'll tell you how to do all that. Please share this video wherever you can and be sure to like it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't and click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. This is Ollie Matthews and this is the Narcissistic Resistance. Take care everybody.